Okay, so in the last video, we talked about the basics of prompt chaining. And in this video, we're gonna take things to the next level by creating a real world application with an AI product recommendation engine for an e-commerce company. And specifically, what we're gonna build is we're gonna build a recommendation engine for a home theater installation and design company. So in this particular case, customers will be able to come to the website. They're going to fill out a form of basically what they're looking for. Uh, they're also going to be able to ask any questions and then we are going to send them a customized home theater design plan that includes product recommendations. So uh, if we go ahead and we finish filling this particular form out, we have everything almost ready. We just need to select the different types of products that we're looking for. Uh, we're looking for a recommendations on. So we're actually going to select the theater seating, uh, the UPS power system and some streaming devices. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna submit that. And so once that is submitted, what happens is the customer is going to get a, um, an email that looks something like this, where it gives them the product recommendations, it gives them the design considerations, uh, and then it answers any questions that they had. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you what this looks like at a high level, and then we're going to uh, take a look at what we have built inside of Flowwise that makes this possible. So you've already seen the form, but we also used uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, automation to make this work. And so I found that uh, when you have multi-steps or using sort of like a form of prompt chaining, using like an automation tool like NAN or Make or Zapier uh, really helps you uh, visualize the entire process from start to finish, including uh, the AI elements. So in this particular case, what we're doing is we have created a webhook that takes the information from our form uh, previously, and then it's going to send it to a variety of different nodes that's going to process that data. And at the end, it's going to send the customer an email. And so this particular node is an HTTP request that actually goes to our uh, AI chatbot or our workflow that's going to create the product recommendation. Uh, and then this is the, uh, the node that actually helps us generate the HTML email response that's going to be sent to the customer. The bottom note here is a separate note that I developed for you know, answering the customer question. Uh, but for this particular exercise, we didn't actually need it because it was actually already being answered uh, in this particular uh, node. And what I found out was that, again, this helps us really control the way that our information is processed. And it gives you a lot of flexibility when you're actually creating uh, your applications. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the individual workflows that we use to create this uh, application. So the first is the product recommendation. And for this particular app, we actually just used a, a simple retrieval, uh, retrieval chain uh, that uses a Chroma database. And so if you have a large uh, database of products, I would actually recommend doing something more like an SQL database or using something like Neo4j. But for this example, it actually turned out pretty well. But one of the things that you want to make sure is that you have a uh, an LLM that can actually handle the product recommendations and can um, can actually give you what you want. And so yeah, if we go ahead and we go back and we check out the, uh, the next AI node is the HTML email formatting node. And for that, what we did was we, we have another uh, setup where it's essentially, it's an LLM chain uh, with a prompt template. And in this particular case, we are taking the, uh, the output from the previous node uh, with the product recommendations. And then we are using that output as input for our, for our template that we're using for the, uh, the HTML email. And so in this case, the AI, telling the AI that you are a home theater expert, you advise clients on the best products to buy for the home theaters. Uh, based on the product, the following product recommendations, please create an HTML formatted email template that gives the client a plan for their home theater. Uh, and so we're also asking it to personalize the email and then we are uh, giving it a basically a template to follow when sending out the email. Uh, and so these types of automations are possible when you combine both applications like Flowwise with an automation platform like N8N. And in this particular example, we, uh, I originally had a custom JS function 
uh, that basically was an API call for the, uh, the product recommendation engine. Uh, but I found that as I began to develop the automation, it was a lot easier and simpler to simply separate them. And that way I could actually uh, create a much more streamlined and flexible uh, workflow inside of N8N. And so if we look at, for example, the customer question node, um, you know, we've basically split up into three potential workflows. And this is going to be actually helpful once we start doing things like generating SQL like queries or using a node for J, because this will allow us to answer the customer question using like a retrieval chain. And then we can develop a separate chain uh, that can, you know, take advantage of this. And then we can combine all the data at the end. So it's really, really helpful. But let's go ahead and see if our email is actually ready. We find out that it is. And if we go ahead and just uh, maximize it, you can see that it has given us um, all of the things that we're looking for for our custom home theater design. It's giving us an overview. It's giving us the product recommendations uh, that we selected based on the categories. It's giving us uh, the design considerations for our, uh, our home theater design. And it's also answering our question about the, uh, the main advantages of LED TVs over projectors. And so something like this is a very, very powerful way to basically give customers a customized uh, plan for whatever they're looking for, you know, whether it's uh, home design or, you know, something that you're advising them or consulting them uh, that requires a lot of different, you know, pieces and a lot of different products that they have to consider. Uh, and so this is a great way to create your product recommendation engines uh, that can take advantage of everything that your company has to offer whether it's your product database or even your knowledge base, your general knowledge base. Now, some of the things that I would actually do if I was going to create a production ready product recommendation engine is again, I would, uh, I would switch out uh, the retrieval methods uh, for your product database with something like um, an SQL lookup or a Neo4j. And this just allows you to have some better accuracy when it comes to your uh, product recommendations. The other thing that I would do is if you are going to use something like a retrieval based uh, generation for your product catalog, I would actually keep it separate or use like a metadata filter. Uh, and if you do that, you can you can actually increase the accuracy of your uh, of the results or at least your product recommendations. And the second thing I would do or the third thing I would do is to make sure that your your product images are uh, properly sized. Uh, so that you can get uh, the best results with if you're using like an email template. And so, yeah, doing these things can really help you with your product recommendation engines and really help increase the, um, the accuracy and the performance of the AI chatbot. So that's the product recommendation engine. Uh, like I said, uh, using an automation tool along with Flowwise is a very powerful way to not just integrate it with your marketing, but also help you I manage the data and also help you develop the application. So in a future video, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use uh, an SQL lookup uh, generator or a uh, Neo4j database, and we're going to use it to help scale our product database so we can actually have thousands of products that can be recommended and, and make our application uh, even more flexible and powerful. So with that, I'll see you in the next video.